So roll call. <laughs> All right, so do we have a, a roll call here? I'm, do you have everyone noted? Yeah, we, we have everybody noted. So just for reference, so we've got yourself, obviously, Joe, Don, Richard, and Kelly. Great. Thank you. Okay, so uh, approval of minutes from the August 19th meeting. Uh, that was the open minutes. So it looks like uh, Joe, uh, Joe is moving. We just need a seconder. Looks like Richard's the seconder. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, is there any declaration of pecuniary, pecuniary interests? I'll take that as an affirmative no. Uh, financial update. So that's over to you, Richard. Um, okay. The, um, I think I just got an email from this morning from Christine that says at August 31st, I just have to look at it again at August 31st. So, um, we have a bank balance of $689,000. Um, so, which includes, so for the, what we, so the receipts during the year are the balance of the 2020 MAT funds, which is $380,000. A payment for um, MAT funds, for 2001 of 198,000. Um, we got a, a, a secondary payment. If you remember, we got 290 or $300,000 from FedNOR back in 2020. We got another payment from them topping us up for 30,000 and an EDC transfer 167. We've spent $286,000 so far. Uh, seventy-one thousand dollars on bank or seventy-one dollars on bank fees, which leaves our bank our bank balance at August of six eighty-nine. So from there, we would hopefully get topped up to our seven sixty at some point in time for what we're entitled to. We hope if uh, that funds keep coming in the way they are, and then the rest of our expenditures that uh, might be laid out there. So. Not sure whether there's anything else on that. Uh, where are we at with regards to that FedNOR money? Because there was stipulations that we had to spend so much by a certain period. Have we spent what we, were we, we were required to or are we still within timelines there? We did and I think we sent in our, our claim form okay. and I think everything was accepted. I think Travis, was it not? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Okay. So I think from that program, we're done. Although I think Travis has got a couple more applications in, but nothing approved. Okay. Excellent. Did anyone have any other questions for Richard with regards to the financials? Okay, great. So we'll move on to new business. Uh, Travis, over to you for the staff updates. Okay, thanks Beverly. I'll uh, again, keep this brief because everybody has the, uh, the dashboard. Um, I'm gonna start with uh, CN. So uh, as I imagine all the hoteliers are aware, um, you know, they are operating from September 25th through October 12th. Uh, their website is currently stating that they are sold out for that period. Uh, and we've been able to confirm as of September 13th, uh, we are aware of 31 buses that are coming to the area. Um, if those numbers change at all, we'll, we'll notify the board. Um, the next item is uh, wayfinding installation. So that is uh, all the new signage that will be um, installed throughout the community. Uh, that will begin uh, most likely early next week. And we'll see... Uh, uh, that signage installed uh, between uh, um, sort of 
third week of September through to uh, October. So you'll start to see some more signage uh, that'll highlight uh, some of the attractions uh, in and around the community and then uh, be more consistent with the community branded. Um, also uh, on wayfinding, the uh, wayfinding for the snowmobile um, route is uh, currently in process as well. Um, with respect to uh, the Algoma Trail Network, so the mountain bike construction, um, the owner for Sanche Boreal is currently in town. I had a walkthrough with him uh, yesterday at the trails under construction, just developing a plan for completion for this year. Uh, and uh, we will be wrapping up at the end of uh, October. Um, we've made uh, good progress to date. A few of the trails are currently open and ready. Uh, and then uh, the remaining trails that they're working on will be uh, uh, wrapped up by the end of October. Um, the other items, uh, we did have conversation with uh, Stokely Creek and Search Mount with respect to their winter operations. As of right now, we've confirmed both will be, uh, will, will be open and I'm gonna let Richard speak to it a little bit more during his marketing conversation. Um, the other item that I just wanted to uh, touch on was uh, the, uh, the rollout of the SPARK program. So we're working uh, in conjunction with Algoma Country and DNO. Um, on uh, a program that invites uh, uh, businesses or entrepreneurs to apply for funding uh, and mentorship grants uh, that will encourage uh, new, business, new tourism ideas within the community. So we'll be sending out a package on that uh, to the hoteliers and also um, we can uh, issue it to some of the attractions uh, throughout the community. So it was uh, launched mid September and we'll have pitch sessions which are currently scheduled for November. Um, so we'll get some applications in and determine, um, you know, what groups will be invited to the, the pitch sessions. Uh, beyond that, uh, just a quick update on the mat collection. So we, uh, in, in July, we collected $130,220.02. Um, uh, so that's $50,000 above the collections from last year at this time. And, uh, you know, what I believe to be a good sign is we we're only off by 20000 from the collections of uh, occurred in 2019. So, um, you know, certainly hoping that, that those trends continue for, uh, for the rest of the year. Um, and that is it uh, in terms of my update, unless anybody has any specific questions. I've got just a comment is, is uh, um, in, in a conversation is, is we, um, on the buses, I would, I'd ask the question is, is whether all the bus tours, uh, um, how would I say, informed Tourism Sault Ste. Marie, whether they were coming into the community and sometimes they book directly with the hotels. I, 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 don't, I don't think we can put a policy in place right now, but I, I would hope that we can come up with something to ensure that we're, Tourism Sault Ste. Marie is collecting all the buses that come in. So give that some thought on as we move forward as to what we can do to make sure that for 2022, we're capturing all that information. Absolutely, Richard. We did uh, put out calls to the, the local hotels uh, this year to try, try to collect uh, as much data as we could. And um, I think, and everybody responded. And, uh, but I think um, perhaps you brought it up on our last call. We may also work with the, uh, whomever is operating the train to kind of get their, their data as well. So we can get a wholesome picture of uh, what tour groups are coming in. Travis, can I ask, have we gotten any uh, feedback from Sales Superior with regards to where their ticket sales ended up, what our contribution was, did they consider it a success or what have you? Yeah, we had a preliminary conversation with them yesterday. We're expecting a, a bit more follow-up uh, you know, potentially in November, they'd like to have a meeting to discuss uh, what next year could look like. Um, sales were roughly uh, 55%, um, which they felt was, uh, was reasonable for this year. Uh, we walked through some suggestions on their, their behalf and uh, some of our dialogue in terms of what worked, what didn't work. Um, we're awaiting further uh, information from them, whether, whether or not they're going to move forward with uh, a request for funds. Uh, it was not brought up yesterday, um, so we're, uh, you know, we'll wait again until we have another conversation. But at this point, uh, 
even if they do request uh, support by way of funding, there's some offsets there because uh, we were, um, along with uh, Destination Northern Ontario, involved with uh, um, a photography uh, collection, video collection on the return trip uh, back to Thunder Bay. So in their original proposal, they had some costs that were included uh, in their financial requests that are no longer in there. So we're just waiting for from some additional feedback from them. Um, and we'll report back to the board once we have those details. I think overall, um, you know, 55% of ticket sales uh, wasn't bad given that, you know, when we rolled out the program, it was, you know, unfortunately in lockdown. Yeah. Uh, you know, I certainly hope that uh, once the border opens up that, you know, that could be a, a key attractor. Um, and, uh, you know, I think we've, we've got some suggestions uh, that we're working through with respect to what we can do in terms of uh, some additional marketing tactics, as well as uh, some direct sales right in the uh, marina. They felt that that would be uh, advantageous as we go through uh, next year. I think there was a lot of uh, individuals walking by from, uh, from out of town that wanted to book right, right on the marina and, and weren't able to, um, you know, and you know, perhaps forgot about it or didn't want to go through the level of effort to book online up to that point. So we'll right. uh, revisit that. Could I also ask now, are, are they, was that level considering lockdown, have they made the commitment for next year? I, I think that it was kind of, I don't want to say thrown together last minute, but, it, you know, they, they came to us late in the game. We were still under lockdown, so we couldn't really get behind it to the fullest extent. I mean, if they've committed to coming for a certain week next year, certainly we can make that part of the uh, promotional packages or some of the things that we're going to do to try to get ridership and extra ridership for them and whatnot. Absolutely, Don. So uh, they suggested a meeting in November. I think they're um, keen to come back. Uh, and I think that we'll discuss kind of the time frame at that point. They are rolling out a program for next year called uh, the Superior Safari. So it's a five day uh, trip between Thunder Bay and the Sioux with uh, multiple stops along the way. Um, so that's one that uh, is getting a lot of interest from Destination uh, Northern Ontario, Destination Ontario. Um, you know, they feel that it could be, uh, you know, potentially a, a Canadian signature experience. So um, our early conversations were you know, they've got to come to the Sioux anyways, would they have a couple days stop over uh, on each trip? Um, but I think there's a, a secondary conversation there about uh, a similar trial period to what we did this year, where they're here for at least 10 days at once. So we'll, we'll finalize that conversation. We'll have more details on that conversation after uh, November. Okay, any other questions for, for Travis or regards to uh, the updates? Okay, so I guess Richard, we're turning it over now to you for the summer marketing results and the winter overview. Thank you. If you bear with me a second while I just load it up. Um, did you trigger, 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 trigger? I did not. Presumably you can't see anything because I haven't triggered share my screen. So do that. With luck, you guys can all see the big red oval that says winter 2022 marketing plan. Can someone come up or something or say yes? <laughs> Bernie, can you yeah. see that? Yeah, it's okay. all good. Okay, great, thanks. So I'll go ahead. Um, so two items on the agenda. Um, first, a recap of summer 2021, and then secondly, moving into winter 2022, including timeline. So recap of this summer. This is, you've got to see a lot of things all populate, so stand by. The first thing we did was three written nasty articles, uh, roughly by season. So we did a nasty one in spring, um, a summer, and we have an ongoing one currently for fall right now. In addition to that, we had a nasty video that um, got filmed early August and premiered on digital and social, um, I think 29th of August. And 
I'm just going to move the other screen second. And we have a fourth one still in the can, which I'm going to talk about later, but we, we pay for it. It's all good. It's all done. We're going to use this to promote winter. So I'll talk about that short, talk about that shortly. I'm going to go into more details on each of these in a second. I'm just reminding you of the timing at this point. We also had a blog to article uh, with social media and newsletter that went out in July. We had a piece with Village Media, with Sue Today, uh, one of the spotlight articles went out in July. We had a large Expedia campaign that ran from June to the end of August. And we had a um, largely encompassing social media, search engine marketing, and pay-per-click pay campaign with Kibera that actually is still ongoing too, but I have some results for that as well. And then on top of that, we were given um, approval to gather some new photography and videography assets. So let's look in slightly more detail at each of these. Oh, sorry, and we had an out of doors magazine piece as well, which will be realized in February as part of when, it, when the Sioux gets noticed as part of the out of doors um, annual fishing guide, mm -hmm. which will be big in February. So first one, nasty. The four articles, three articles plus the video, it seemed to have any, well, spring starts off fairly well. And if you want one metric in particular, you could say the 204 clicks to our website was a good one. It had 18,000 reads, a um, couple of hundred thousand on social media. The summer one did similar, it had more of a social media presence um, and, and slightly less clicks through to our website. And then the fall has been the best performing of the three with 353 clicks uh, to our website. Uh, roughly 18,000 and counting uh, uh, reads, but still in flight, this one, and uh, almost half a million social media impressions. On top of that, we had a video, which I hope you guys have had a chance to look at. It's pretty fun. And um, that's been viewed about 42, almost 43,000 times. Again, it's still in flight. It's still um, being boosted and still being shared around the place. Um, a, a, a verbal summary of nasty is that I think it went well. I think we have seen stronger campaigns in the past with Narcity, and I think that's possibly because of the novelty value has worn off slightly, especially with local residents and particularly people who follow our page. So it's, I think when we did the first one, it's all great, oh, fantastic, look what's happening. But now we've done three additional ones. We're seeing a little bit less traction locally. Certainly when we post the article, you see a little bit less and less engagement. So people are, particularly our Sioux audience, are becoming less and less um, surprised and, uh, by this. I mean, Nasty is a journal done by millennials for millennials in the GTA. And to that end, it's fantastic. We're reaching an audience that, um, and we, that hopefully will come up to the Sioux to take their Instagram photos, see some pretty things, to stay in our hotels. Um, anecdotally, we get a lot of comments from friends of friends who are in the Toronto area who see it. I think that was the particular highlight of the video is a number of people, we had a lot of feedback from people who have, who have friends reach out to them they hadn't heard from a long time saying, oh, I saw you in this video, that was great. So it's really great exposure for the young GTA crowd. Um, though I think the articles are slightly dying off and partly that is nasty also just churn out meat like a machine um, a lot a day, so. We did a piece with BlogTO called How to Spend 36 Hours in Sault Ste. Marie. The challenge I think we knew with the inception of this piece was that they were going to write the content themselves and we weren't going to have any editorial say. Um, to be completely frank, that got realized in the quality of the content when we saw it. Initially, they were going to write about Sioux, Michigan. We did intercept that one though, and they changed their product to be about Sault Ste. Marie. Um, but the quality of the writing wasn't particularly great and we didn't have a lot to say about uh, a lot we could have done about that. So I think it was a bit of a miss on the written content, but I think it was a really big success, the newsletter content. And as you can see, we had over well, 1,100 clicks to our website as a result of the newsletter and 25,000 reads. And again, these are all young people in the GTA area getting exposure to our brand, to our city, uh, to our website. We also were able to provide them with content for an Instagram feed and story, it did very well. Did really, I mean, even if you look at BlogTO's posts, it did really well by relative in relation to what they typically do. And as a result, we had 78 or 79 followers or clicks to our website and more than approximately 17 new followers to the Instagram Sault Ste. Marie. 
So I think we had a big success with the newsletter and the Instagram piece of that. Moving on to village media, the village media piece, we had an unforgettable, we had a nice title piece written by a village media called An Unforgettable Summer, Why Sault Ste. Marie is an Adventure Seeker's Dream. And again, we really put sales period at the top of that. And we got over well, 1,700 clicks to our website and over a million social media impressions. And this was targeting an audience of what, that was in Ontario, but wasn't a GCA. So it was the kind of the next category. So the Sudbury's, the Barry's, the Collingwood's, the North Bay's. And seeing the amount of engagement we had on social media and clicks to our website, I would say this was a big success too. And I think also with a lot of these things, it keeps the relationship going. Because following this article, we had some earned media as a result of, I think, Travis making some calls that was specifically about sales superior. We generated over 600 clicks to our website, and we can assume an equal, if not greater, number of clicks to the sales superior website. So we've got a very good relationship with Village Media right now through um, their editorial and their content team. So we'd like to continue that. The Expedia piece, this was a quite an interesting one because I don't believe we've done something like this before, and there was a pandemic. Um, as a recap, what we basically did was have banner ads within the Expedia page that was geotargeted. So in a perfect world, if you were if your IP address was in Ontario, you stood a chance of seeing an I or an ad for Sault Ste. Marie. If you clicked on that ad, you would get information about the Sioux and you'd be you'd be sent to a dedicated Sault Ste. Marie page where you could book. The results of that, we had 1.3 million impressions that led to 989 clicks through to the Sault Ste. Marie page on Expedia, which is a click-through rate of 0.07%, which is fairly low. I mean, clicks, banner ads tend to be quite low, but you'd like to see them at the roughly the 0.1%. So a, a little bit low. As a result of it, we had just over 2,000 rooms book, booked that generated, you know, Expedia gave, gave us these numbers in US dollars for some reason, 252,000 in revenue. So considering the spend was 20,000 USD to generate 252,000, um, the salesperson Expedia was delighted and thought it was a big success and of course wanted us to do it again. So we have done some dig digging into this, of course, to see actually whether we will do this again. And I had some really great chats with, uh, with Kelly and a couple of other hoteliers who provided their expertise. Um, I think in summary, it was a success. I think in summary, we may find that we may want to use advertising dollars in a different direction in the future. Um, as it happened, we were advertising during August, which became a huge boom month for us and for the hoteliers. And it was probably not necessary, but it was great at the start mm -hmm. of the season, particularly in June when it was fairly dead out there and we were in lockdown and very cautious. You can see these two graphs on the left here, representing the purple line representing 2021. The red line 2020, which was of course a fairly bleak, although it did have an uptick in August, and then a more regular year in 2019, which again would show a steady incline with a, a peak in July and August. So you can see, um, according to these results in Expedia, a massive surge in July and August of, of Expedia bookings. Next, we had an ongoing campaign with Kivera. So as of August 31st, we have spent, and I wish I'd done a total column now, um, approximately um, twelve or thirteen thousand dollars has been spent. I mean, this has been this has been a wide-ranging campaign because it's had many areas to it, including social media boosting on Facebook and Instagram. This has been a massive success. We've generated one point seven million of impressions. We've had nine hundred and eleven clicks to a website. Um, and it's just been a great way to get engagement. I think I have a click in a minute, which I'll come back to on this page. Um, we've also done pay-per-click advertising, on the, which is basically um, ads and keyword searching on Google, geotargeted to Ontario. The 5,000 spend there has generated 24, almost 25,000 clicks to the website, uh, 24,000 <coughs> clicks to the website, which is fantastic. That's particularly good when we launch a new website, which will be starting from the ground up. And we'll see some details on that in a second. And then we've um, we've been experimenting a slight amount with the banner display ads using uh, a fallen icon and the iconic image of Robertson Cliffs. 
in the fall. So we spent about $1,300 on that, and it's generated just shy of 3,000 um, clicks on our website. Um, also, just a point to note, within the boosted social media content um, bucket, we did go off on a kind of a sub-spend with an Instagram account called Explore Ontario, which has about 80,000 followers. Um, that was a big success, very cheap, and generated approximately <coughs> 75 new followers for Sault Ste. Marie. And um, that's something we'd love to do again, and they were a great partner to work with. Here's what I wanted to show you guys. The big success we had, I think, looking at the boosted social media content was um, the big article we put out on Facebook was six Ontario sandy beaches, the best sandy beaches in Ontario. And we did see a trend of this with also with the search engine is that a lot of people confined to Ontario were looking for sandy beaches in their summer vacation. So we saw, we put this article out, we spent um, $680 on it, which is quite a small amount. It reached 67,000 people because we got a lot of organic shares in it. We got 179 people sharing it. Um, almost 500 likes and engaged with about 7,000. So that one piece alone, leaning onto the beaches, um, was a big success for us. What are we looking at here? Um, photography and videography assets. We had approval to spend money to gather some new assets of this. We have spent uh, three quarters of that approximately to date. Um, and we've gone with a, very, a variety of photographers and ways of gathering this content including the very talented photographer Conrad Wurzak. I won't have a crack at that one. He's also an illustrator you'll probably recognize him from Naturally Illustrated. And we, we had two days with him. He provided us with a number of great photos. Uh, we've taken content at the Bush Plain Museum, as Richard knows, photos of restaurants, photos of the Zodiac Tour. And we've got some great drone footage from Chris Marshall, which we've used still images on the website. Uh, sorry, yes, on the website, but also on the tourism Facebook account. So that's in the top right hand corner. Or an awesome picture of Topsail Island just after they relay the track. And so, yeah, great. Uh, it's We've dotted those new photos in throughout our website to keep it fresh. We've also added a bit of diversity to, to, diversity to our website to show some people of color. And it's been great on social media too. So that's been a big success, in my opinion. Let us look at the website. Going all the way back to prior to May before it had launched, when we still had the old website, we basically were at zero people or zero users per day. We've risen nicely throughout June and July, particularly with our paid strategy, to hitting about a thousand people a day. Um, so more metrics in the total period of June the 1st to August 31st, we had 60, almost 69,000 users, 80,000 sessions, um, average session duration, one minute, 11, 17 seconds, and a bounce range of 66%. Um, 158,000 page views. Where are they coming from? Majority, because we've been targeting them, the majority are from Canada, 77% almost, with a further 15% from the US. In Ontario, I'm uh, sorry, within Canada, 90% of the audience have been in Ontario, 7% in Quebec. And if we drill down even further, we will see that within Canada, no, within Ontario, 24% of people are from Toronto. The Sioux is very high as well, 11%. And then we see a lot of the kind of outlying regions of Toronto, the GTA, so Brampton, Mississauga, Hamilton, um, Vaughan, etc. Uh, it's great to see. Um, Ottawa and Sudbury in there as well. Here's another way of looking at the website traffic, and this divides up by strategy. So this divides up by, if you see the purple column, the paid search, which we started as soon as we felt it was appropriate, and as soon as lockdown was starting to ease, we were ready to travel. So that happened at the end of June. So the paid search in purple represents people who came to our website via that. Um, the most pleasing one, of course, is the organic search. That's not one we pay a single cent for. People are just coming to our website. Um, the direct is via paid, is via articles, or people just directly bookmarking and coming back to our site. And of course, it shows the social media, um, people coming to our website via social media, via boosting, such as that Beaches article. And not to get too much in the weeds, but here's one more piece that shows a slightly tighter time frame of, of June to July. 
Uh, and here you can also see that a number of people in light blue have started to appear via the, pay, via the display campaign. We've had a nice picture of Robert Sinclair. So all in, our, all in all, our website's generating about a thousand visitors a day. Um, and yeah, I think that's great considering where we started at the beginning of the summer. Now I'm going to move on to fall and winter, if I may, unless anyone has any questions about the summer campaign. So what I'm going to do with this, again, is start with a timeline of pro, uh, proposed uh, media, and then I'll move into a little bit more detail on some of the pieces that we haven't heard of before, or if they are new. So starting with one we paid for, and it's in the can, and we'd like to just action, is the fourth and final piece of the nasty agreement. We're going to put this out at some point at the end of November, and again, we'll be targeting our main winter assets, search once, Stokely, high water. Um, snowmobiling and basically everything we can. Nasty like to do seven or eight pieces and they like to find social media, Instagram content. So um, we're confident this will be a big success and we think it'll go well. The next piece that would come out is that this is a proposed piece that so we'll talk about in slightly more detail with a single slide in a second, is to run two pieces with Blue Mountain Magazine, Blue Mountain's part of Mountain Life. I will talk about that more in a second, but just to give you an idea of the timing, is if this, if this was proved, it would run once in October and then once again in January. Um, the success of the village piece, particularly for reaching the kind of the, the non-GTA Ontario audience, suggests we should do that again. So that's another proposal we would like to put in. Um, I'm negotiating with village media on if we can get, because we have such a good relationship, I'm just being, being a little bit cheeky, if we can spend the same amount of money and get two articles. I'm not sure if they'll go for that, but it's always good not to, always good to try. So we'll see. There may be one, there may be two, depending on the budget. Blog TO. I don't think we would do another written article again because of the challenge, let's say, we had with the first time round. But the, the limited spend we had with the newsletter and the 1,100 people we came to our website is undeniable. So I think we would look to do that again. So you can allocate it with Blog TO. So we might just do a spend on the newsletter. The Nasty video, I'm sure you've all heard people who've been featured in the Nasty nasty video. It was chaotic, it was fun, it was inaccurate at times, and it got a lot of people talking, and it got a lot of buzz, and I think it, it's just a great piece to get Sue on the map. They were all over the place in the two days they had in the summer, Robertson Cliffs, the waterfront. I think it'd be great to explore getting them up here to go to hit search one, Stokely, um, things like the Crimson Ridge, Ice Skating Trail, I think they'd have a blast. I think we'd get great value out of it. And I think at that point, then we might seek to give Nasty some space and do uh, work with some other contributors or some other organizations. But I think um, having two of those videos might be worthwhile. Toronto Life Magazine. This is from the same uh, overall publication house, McLean's. The Plains is a very reputable piece, uh, piece. We've worked with them in a different part of our world in the community development to great success. They're a very professional team. Toronto Life, of course, is a lifestyle magazine uh, that's solely aimed at Toronto as opposed to the whole of Canada. And I'm going to talk about that in slightly more detail shortly on a, with its own slide. The big success, uh, or one of the main successes we had this year has been working with Kibera, with search engine, marketing, pay-per-click, and with social. We'd like to do that again. It's a great way to drive traffic to our website. And again, video and photography assets, it's so important for us to have up-to-date content. It helps so much with our social media, with our website, with our general marketing. Um, we'd like to push forward and do that. We have a budget, of course, for uh, fan tours. We'd like to work with Algoma Country with a piece for On Snow Magazine to help push snowmobiling. And we'd like to also have the flexibility to bring up some people and kind of pivot when opportunities arise. We'd like a budget for fan tours. We're also going to have um, a snow plan affiliation trail map piece of advertising for snowmobiling. We'd like to do some ski rack cards. This is quite a limited spend, all in all, but we think, and hitting the newsletters as well, we think this is a great way to uh, target snow, um, the snowmobiling crowd and also the cross-country skiing audience. And just a quick note on the cross-country skiing audience. It's quite hard, we think. We think it's quite hard to hit and to specifically reach 
one time. Whereas with downhill skiing, you could potentially do it with some um, pieces in Blue Mountain magazine. The cross country ski audience tend to be fragmented, they tend to be club based. So we are think, we're thinking we're just going to roll our sleeves up and contact a lot of individual clubs, some shops, and with rap cards and with newsletters, we think we'll get word out about coming to the suit. So that's our plan for that. Looking at more detail into Blue Mountain magazine, which is by, by Mountain Life. Mountain Life have three publications geographically split. One is for the BC and the Rockies. One is French. And one is the Blue Mountain one, which aims at the Collingwood crowd. We want to target the Blue Mountain crowd. We, we think there's a great opportunity again this year to bring that ski audience up to the Sioux, um, to try a new hill that they necessarily haven't tried before, to get away from the crowd, to try somewhere new. So it's one's a very big mountain, just as big, almost as Blue Mountain. Uh, and of course, cross country skiing is huge. And with Stokely in the picture this year and high water, we think we can really get some people up with this. Some details on the Blue Mountain piece. They have, their print is 12,000 per edition and they do four editions annually. So the, the two we would like to consider working with would be in October and in January. They have 348,000 readers. 35% of their content is distributed to retail locations and 15 center ski clubs. When we did some market research ourselves and contacted these ski clubs, in particularly in the, the upper Michigan region, actually, but more for this purpose, we contacted people in or ski clubs and shop outfitters in GTA and in Collingwood. We said, you know, what magazines do you guys have? You know, how do you if, how do we do our job? How, how can we market to, to you? And the two things they said was, well, we have magazines. We have Blue Mountain magazine. And secondly, if you want to send us the rack cards, we can put them on the front desk. So we're taking them at their word. So we are going with, we would like to go with Blue Mountain Magazine and as previously mentioned, some rat cards. Back to Blue for a second. It's, it seems to really be a great demo for us with the average age being just about 38 and a half. Nice household, high, average household income of 102K. And when you do the web, you get about 30,000 unique views. The plan of Blue would be to do a double page spread on pages four and five, which is great. And then, the, and then the online article would have 100,000 weeks geotargeted to Ontario. The second piece, which was new, is the piece with Toronto Life magazine. Again, it's an iconic, culturally relevant, trustworthy magazine with strong brand recognition. The proposition we, work in, we are working with um, would be to have an online piece written by, written by the St. Joseph's media staff a little like how they worked with us from the claims piece for our community development. Uh, promotional placements, clicking to the con custom content. It, have, it would be boosted on Facebook and Instagram. It would have newsletter support and it would have a dedicated e-blast. Just looking at some of the demographics of who they are. I didn't type them out. I thought I'd just use their content and just expanded slightly. You can see the print and the digital audience. It's urban. Of course, it's Toronto. The average age of digital is 18 to 49, average household income 75 or 87, 86,000. And you can see the scale of it here with the average issue reaching uh, over a million people and 1.3 million people for digital. Their Facebook has 189,000 plus audience, their Instagram 440,000. They're huge. Getting Getting into the Toronto Life magazine, I think it'd be a great way to resuscitate our winter marketing. Some images of search one, some Stokely, to remind everyone after a bit of a hiatus and forced due to COVID that we're here and to come up to ski with us. I think it'd be a great way to bring you into. up. And that concludes my presentation. Does anyone have any questions about winter proposals? <clears throat> I do. I just have one question. I, I guess most of the stuff that we talked about here has already been approved and paid for, correct? With respect to uh, the winter program, yes, the board has approved uh, a budget of seventy thousand uh, dollars for winter marketing. Uh, the other things that you were talking about, the uh, the magazine articles and stuff like that, 
do we have cost estimates on what that would be? Yes. Yes, it does. Yeah, we do. Um, we're working towards the 70,000 agreement. They all fit within that 70,000 and we can break it out if you like for specific components. Yeah, just I, I didn't see it here. I just didn't know if uh, it looks like there were some quick timelines for this, uh, trying to get an article in the Blue Mountain magazine for the uh, October or whatever. I would think that there was fed. Yeah, we we're on we're on course to be in the October third magazine. There's no problems there. Okay, so that that's already part of the money we've already approved. Then that's correct. Yes. Okay. Is there plans with regards to a new uh, tourism to Saint Marie visitor guide? Yes, um, there is. Uh, I don't know if you'll recall, but we, we passed a resolution with respect to uh, um, funding that uh, last meeting. So we're currently in the process of uh, doing some RFQs uh, in terms of uh, um, graphic design and printing. So we'll continue to work on that. And uh, Alana, can you comment as to when we're going to be reaching out with respect to ads? Sure, so we're just finalizing, like Travis said, the details with the RFQ for the procurement process and finalizing um, with our city finance the process for ad sales. Tara will be reaching out. She's actually already started to reach out to some of the previous ad suppliers for the guide. We're working on a editorial deadline of mid-November and a graphic design deadline of mid-December to have the guide in hand for January 15th, 2022. Okay, perfect. I just hadn't seen it anywhere on the timelines. Yeah, our, usually in the past, we've shot to have it in January. And quite often we've missed that mark and brought it out in March. We are on track this year to have it uh, in January so that we can hit the, the winter ski season. Fantastic. Thank you. Now, could I also ask about the, the guide there? Will there be a, a digital version available? Yes, yeah, so what we've asked of the designer and the RFQ is to provide a PDF version as well as a flip version, which will be accessible from the website. Excellent. Any other questions for Richard or the Tourism to St. Marie team with regards to marketing results and winter campaign? Okay, I think we're good to move on to our next, which is the Destination Ontario Group of Seven collaboration. Uh, Alana, I believe you have some more information on that. I do, yes. So this is um, a part of a pan-provincial um, effort with Destination Ontario to um, have some in-market product for the Group of Seven. So what Destination Ontario has done is reached out to all of the different uh, destinations from marketing, destination marketing organizations such as us to collaborate together to um, do a digital ad campaign for the group of seven promoting various tour routes. Um, there's seven tour routes that are put, put out to market. Sault Ste. Marie and Algoma is one of them. And it highlights uh, different opportunities for folks to come to the area and have various group of seven experiences. It's part of a, a large campaign uh, running just under a million dollars that they're investing into group of seven product. Our contribution to that campaign would be $5,000. And what it would do is drive traffic to um, the specific dedicated URL for the group of seven and include the moments of Algoma website. So that moment of Algoma website references the experiences that um, guests can have when they come to Sault Ste. Marie and Algoma, uh, specific to the group of seven, including the interpretive installations that we have at the Art Gallery of Algoma, the machine shop, the boxcar, um, the Agua Canyon tour train. Um, obviously, we know it's sold out for this year, but it will be promoting that experience for folks um, keeping it top of mind. As well, um, there's they're running digital ads and video content, um, promoting the Group of Seven and their experiences in Algoma. 
We are currently also working with the Art Gallery of Oklahoma, who is housing uh, a Carmichael exhibit right now. They currently have 37 original pieces of artwork um, promoting a group of seven right now, and it's running in the Sioux until December 10th. So this ad campaign will be driving traffic to, um, to our attraction with the Art Gallery and promoting the group of seven. Okay, and we'll go through the resolutions once we're done everything here. Yeah. Uh, so next we have the Everest Canadian Senior Curling Championship and Elena, I believe that's you as well. Yeah, so this is a bid that was put forward um, last year to Curling Canada that we were approved for for um, the Everest Canadian Seniors Championships, which is a national level curling event scheduled for December 6th to 11th um, here in Sault Ste. Marie. We're working in collaboration with the Sioux Curling Club, um, who is the host organizing committee for this event. Uh, just a quick recap of the event itself. Um, there will be representation from across Canada. Like I said, it's a national event, uh, bringing in approximately 150 athletes and coaches plus uh, family and friends. So we expect upwards of around 300 to 350 people um, coming for the event over nine days. So it's a quite a large um, opportunity for us. And what it will do as well is continue to keep Sault Ste. Marie top of mind for national level hosting events. We're quite fortunate in the Curling Canada lineup. Um, most of their events were pulled this year. Um, we were one of the ones that were fortunate enough to be able to uh, to stand in a COVID environment. So this event will be held um, in December and part of the bid package um, was a $20,000 uh, hosting fee, which I believe was included in the budget that was passed um, last year. So what we're asking for now is just the release of those funds. Okay, and again, that's a resolution that will pass towards the end here. Does anyone have questions for Alana with regards to uh, the curling championships? Okay, so I guess we will uh, move into closed here now for the last new business item uh, for the downtown plaza. Perfect, so we're back now in open session. Uh, and I guess the, the next matter here is to go through a couple of resolutions. Uh, so going back, first of all, to the Destination Ontario Group of Seven, uh, the resolution put forward is, be it resolved that Tourism Sault Ste. Marie contribute $5,000 exclusive of HST to the Destination Ontario Group of Seven advertising partnership campaign. Do I have a mover on this resolution? Beverly. Don, thank you. A seconder? Richard? All in favor? And motion or resolution passed. Uh, the next one would be the curling. So be it resolved that Tourism Sault Ste. Marie provide the $20,000 hosting fee to the Sioux Coolers Association in partnership with Curling Canada for the 2021 Everest Canadian Seniors Curling Championships being held December 6th to the 11th, 2021. Do I have a mover? Joe? And a seconder? Don? All in favor? And resolution passed. Uh, the third one uh, is with regards to the downtown plaza. Be it resolved that Tourism Sault Ste. Marie agree to support to the City of Sault Ste. Marie downtown plaza project in the amount of $250,000 to be allocated over the course of two budget years. Do I have a mover on this resolution? Richard? And seconded? Nobody this Joe, okay. And all in favor? 
and resolution passed. So those were our three resolutions that were on the table. Uh, did we have anything else that anyone wanted to bring forward or discuss? No? Okay, so we do have the next meeting slotted as October the 21st, but uh, as previously noted, uh, the board will be convening for a open brainstorming session on October the 14th, correct? Okay. Uh, do I have a mover to put us in to a German? John and a seconder. Show and are we adjourned? Okay. Excellent. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Much appreciated. Congratulations on sharing your first meeting. Thank you. <laughs> I, I hope I did you proud, former chair. <laughs> oh, oh, you did great. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank mm -hmm. you.